Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Aku Effect in the building. Oh my god, guys, I'm super super excited to be on camera today because I have a lot to educate you about. Now you're gonna listen, you're gonna pay attention because someone has been asking me this question and I decided that okay, today I'm going to answer this question. Alright, so it's uh, actually a new student at the University of the People. So well, that this video is because of you. Thank you so much for inspiring me because I am actually making this video because of you. And also, I know it's going to help a lot of University of the People students out there who do not really understand these terms that are being used at University of the People. Now, before I start, I want to welcome all my subbies, my returning subscribers. Thank you so, so much. I'm grateful. Thank you for always coming back to watch my video. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much. And for those that are watching me for the very first time, this is Ako event and please don't forget to hit on that subscribe button down below hit that like button and also as you watch this video you're going to be stating a comment at the comment section and you're going to be sharing my videos to as many people as possible all right so what i want to say first before i start is that please if you're a student in any university any school at all always make sure that you read up the school write-ups okay because i believe that if bertha has been reading if he had she had been reading these school write-ups like she will not go through what she went through last time because she she will not go through what she went through last time all right because she told me she registered for two courses and then something came up all right something came up and she didn't want to take up the course again but she didn't know how to go about it now because of that she was forced she thought when you register for your course there is no way you can not take it up all right but she didn't know there's a remedy to that so she actually took up the courses and one of the courses she did not perform well because of the issue that came up after she had registered for her courses if she knew that there, there, there was a remedy, she would have dropped one of the courses. So, in the video of today, I'm going to be just explaining this term at the University of the People. And this advice also goes to all students, alright? So, you always try to read your school write-ups or updates about your school and everything. Because there might just be something that will help you out in a problem you're going through. Or there is something you need to do and you're not doing it. And at the end of the day, you end up losing unnecessary maths or having unnecessary low grades. Okay? Now, looking at what we are talking in this video, we are going to be talking about what? Cost cancellation, cost drop, and cost withdrawal. Now, I'm going to be reading the school write-ups. I'll read exactly what University of the People wrote. And then from there, I'll explain what it means. Alright? So, we are going to be talking about cost cancellation, cost drop, and cost withdrawal at University of the People. Now, first thing first, let's start with cost cancellation. What is cost cancellation? Let me read the write-ups of University of the People and then explain what this all means to you. Cost cancellation. Student may cancel a registration for a specific cost up, up until two days before the start of the term, of the new term. Students may cancel a registration for a specific cost up until two days before the start of the new term. Cancelling a course before this deadline will not affect the student academic record of CPGA, that's a cumulative GPA, right? Please note that if you cancel all of your courses and do not plan to enroll in any of any courses during the upcoming term, you are required to request a leave of absence by the student portal. Now, I want us to first of all understand what a leave of absence is because when I talk about course job and then I talk about some other things, you might not really understand if you don't get what a leave of absence is. Remember, this last uh, statement says, please note that if you cancel all of your courses and do not plan to enroll in any course during the upcoming term, you are required to request a leave of absence via the student portal. What do they mean by this? What is first of all a leave of absence? I've made a video on leave of absence. It's on my channel. You can always check it out. You see that. But I do not mind. And I wouldn't mind explaining it over and over again so you can better understand. A leave of absence in simple terms is just a period of inactive in school. You being inactive in school. Like you not taking courses in school. That's what we call a leave of absence. Okay, so at a particular point in time or period in time, you apply for a leave of absence. This leave of absence simply means at this point in time, I will not be available in school. I will be inactive in school, but 
I haven't withdrawn from the university. So you are still a student of that university. You are still a part of that university. You haven't withdrawn. Be, you have been. You haven't been withdrawn from the university. But at that particular period, you are not active in school. You are not taking up courses in school. That is what we call a leave of absence. And you cannot just assume a leave of absence unless you apply for it. And you cannot just sit and say, "Oh, this term, term three." I won't attend classes and then you just sit. No, they don't do that. Okay, this is what happens. In at University of People, we have five terms in a year. We have term one, term two, term three, term four, and term five. And now you have just three terms or three times to apply for a leave of absence. So you can only apply for a leave of absence three times in a year. Remember that in a year we have five terms, all right? So if you're applying three times, it means you just attend school two, two terms in a year. So you have just three times, you can't go above that, you have just three times to apply for a leave of absence, all right, in school. So, remember that leave of absence is a period of, of inactive. You are being inactive in school. You are not taking courses in school. So, there is no way you would just sit and say, Oh, I will not go to school this term. Alright? And then you just assume. No. You need to apply for what we call a leave of absence. I'm applying for this. And they will always ask you the reason. And maybe you say, Oh, because you want to concentrate on some family issues. Maybe you will not be able to cope with the courses. Maybe because of health issues. Blah, 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 blah. No problem, they will accept. But remember, you have just three times in a year to apply for a leave of absence at the University of the People. Okay, now let's get back to course cancellation. What is course cancellation? Now, course cancellation happens when you register for a course. And then you have two, you, you can cancel, like take for instance, okay, you register for a course on the 20th of June. And then school is to begin on the 1st of July. What happened is that now you're registered. I'm just taking for example, like if these are the dates that have been given for you to register and for school to resume. All right. So now you register for the course on the 20th of June. Now, on the 23rd, you can cancel. You can say, okay, I'm no longer say particular. There are options there that you can click on, and then you can click on, and then you cancel the courses. All right, but I'm trying to tell you that within this period of time, this is what we call cost cancellation because we will also see a time where it's called cost drop and we also see a time where it's called cost withdrawal. So, but within this period of time, I'm trying to explain to you is what we call cost cancellation and I'm going to be telling you what will happen to your cumulative GPA if you cancel a course. All right, so now you registering a course on the 20th of June and then school is to resume on the 1st of july right so now what happens is that you have 21st 22nd 23rd 24th up to 28th to cancel these courses to click on that course cancellation and say oh i'm not taking this course again i'm not taking one of these or maybe register for two courses and you discover that an issue came up you won't be able to handle this two courses or register for three courses and you say okay i won't be able to handle this um I won't be able to handle these three courses. So now what happens? I want to drop one of the courses. I want to drop two of them and just take up one. All right? So remember, you cannot drop all of your courses. You will all, If you drop, in a case where you want to drop all of your courses, you will need to apply for a leave of absence. So if you take up two courses and you want to drop, let's say you, you, you took up e-commerce and basic accounting, Okay, and then now you want to drop the e-commerce and the basic accounting, both of them. What you do is you will drop the two of them and you still go ahead to apply for a leave of absence. Because you dropping all of the courses, it means you are not taking any course during that term. Alright, so if you want to do that, know that you are dropping e-commerce, you are dropping basic accounting, the two courses you register for, and you are still going to apply for a leave of absence. If you do not do that, you are going to face the, uh, uh, there will be consequences. Okay, that might that will affect your your grades and and your cumulative GPA. All right. So if you are dropping the two courses, you are going to apply for a leave of absence. Okay, that's that's that. So now, in a case where you want to drop just one of the course, you have up to two days. If the if school is to resume on the first of July, no, remember that you register on the twentieth of June, right? School is to resume on the. 1st of July, so you have the latest day, 28th of June, to cancel the course.
to, to click on that cancellation option that I'm not taking the course again. Two days, so you have 29, you have 30, remember you have 30 days after September, April, June. So June has, I'm just trying to explain this, okay, according to the example I've given. I'm not saying that's the date University of Dubai has given. I'm just bringing an example here so we can better understand. So June has 30 days, so you understand that if school is to resume on the 1st, so you have up to 28th of June. So remember they said two days before. So you will need to have 29 and 38 and then school now will begin on the first so they say two days be, you have to cancel two days before that's the latest day two days before all right before the, the start of the new term okay so that is what if you do that that is what is called course cancellation now what happens this course cancellation they say up to two days before the start of the new term canceling a course before this deadline will not affect the student so it's not going to appear it's not going to appear on your transcript this course is not going to appear on that term transcript it's not going to affect your cumulative gpa if you follow this if you if you're taking a course cancellation all right okay that's that's what we call course cancellation so you register and you have two days before the start of the new term to cancel and when you cancel it you know that it's not going to affect your cumulative GPA. It's not going to affect...